Today we're gonna find out how good is the U-Bell archetype in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! What's Boshin? You got Matt here and welcome to another competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! video. The new U-Bell support is finally here and if you like GX era cards then this might be the deck for you. So in this video I'll be covering the U-Bell archetype including an overview on what the cards do and how the deck works, cards and engines that you'll want to pair with it and even cards that are going to help you beat it. So if you're excited for the video then make sure to smash the like button. If this video hits 300 likes I'll bring you the ultimate guide on how to beat you bell. Also, if you like competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, including deck profiles, guides on how to beat the best decks, meta discussions, and videos just like this one, you're going to love this channel. So make sure to subscribe. But with that being said, it's time for us to find out just how good is the U-Bell archetype in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. Let's jump into it. So U-Bell is kind of a misnomer. It's less of a U-Bell deck and more of a Fiend Link strategy, where the U-Bell cards help facilitate linking up into really powerful Fiend monsters, including a bunch of the Unchained cards, and also eventually getting into really powerful Xyz plays too. Now obviously the U-Bell cards can still do what they were intended for, which is do that like pseudo-reverse OTK type of thing, where they can crash into monsters and force your opponent to take the battle damage instead, but it's not all what the deck wants to do right now. Starting with Phantom Nightmare and now with Legacy of Destruction, we've seen a lot of really powerful U-Bell cards join the meta. The cards in the archetype we're going to be covering today are Samsara D. Lotus, Gruesome Grave Squirmer, Geist Grinder Golem, all three of the original U-Bell monsters, including U-Bell, Terror Incarnate, and Ultimate Nightmare. We're also covering Spirit of U-Bell, the Fusion Monster, U-Bell the Loving Defender Forever, Mature Chronicle, Nightmare Pain, Nightmare Throne, and Eternal Favorite. I won't be talking about Phantom of U-Bell because we don't know when it's going to be released in the TCG, but just know that card is crazy. Starting with the main U-Bell monsters, none of them are really good, but you need to play at least a few copies to make the deck work. All three of the original U-Bell monsters share the effect where they can't be destroyed by battle, and you also take no battle damage from attacks involving these monsters. But the first two have mandatory effects in the end phase. U-Bell has to tribute one other monster or destroy itself, and Terror Incarnate has to destroy all other monsters on the field. It's very common to play these two, but you don't really play the ultimate nightmare. It adds another brick to the deck. Now for the new cards. Starting off with Spirit of U-Bell. It can't be destroyed by battle, and you take no battle damage from attacks involving it. If it is destroyed, you can special summon a U-Bell from anywhere, hand, deck, graveyard, or even banishment. It can be special summoned from the hand when an opponent's monster declares an attack. And if it's special summoned, you can add to your hand or set directly from your deck one spell or trap that mentions U-Bell. Samsara D. Lotus can tribute itself for cost to special summon one U-Bell monster from the deck. During your opponent's turn, it's also a pseudo-negate, where it can tribute itself to change an opponent's monster effect to destroy one U-Bell monster on field but it can only be activated while you also control U-Bell. Gruesome Grave Squirmer is the newest monster for the archetype. If you control a Fiend monster, as a quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand, then you can destroy one U-Bell or one monster that mentions it. You can banish it from your graveyard to special summon one Fiend monster with zero attack and defense from your hand or graveyard except for itself. And then we have Geist Grinder Golem, which helps you summon out U-Bell by revealing one in your hand and giving this card to your opponent. It has a big attack stat that can help the U-Bell cards deal big damage, but honestly it doesn't do enough to be relevant for the deck. U-Bell the Loving Defender Forever is a fusion monster that requires a U-Bell monster and one or more effect monsters on the field. If it's fusion summoned, you can burn your opponent for 500 damage for each material used, so in theory you can deal 6000 damage. It can't be destroyed by battle or card effect, and you take no battle damage from attacks involving this card. And at the end of the damage step, if this card battled an opponent's monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack, and if you do, banish that monster. Moving on to the spell and trap cards, starting off with Nightmare Throne. This is a custom card for this deck. On activation, this field spell lets you take one fiend monster with zero attack and defense from your deck and either add it to your hand or destroy it. Just that alone is insane. Once per turn, if a face-up U-Bell monster you control leaves the field by a card effect, you can add to hand one U-Bell monster from your deck, graveyard, or banishment whose original level is one higher or lower than the monster. Then you can special summon it, ignoring its summoning conditions. Nightmare Pain is also a great card. During your main phase, you can destroy one dark monster in your hand or face-up field, and if you do, add one U-Bell or one card that mentions it from deck to hand, except for another Nightmare Pain. While you control a U-Bell monster, your opponent's monsters that can attack must attack U-Bell monsters, and your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from battles involving your U-Bell monsters. Mature Chronicle was seeing a lot of play in earlier builds of U-Bell, but not anymore. 
It gets a counter each time a Yubel or monster that mentions it is summoned, and you can remove counters to activate effects based on the number of counters removed. If one counter is removed, you can special summon one Yubel from your graveyard. If two are, you can add one of your banished cards to your hand. Three, banish one card from your deck. Four, destroy one card on the field. And five, add one super polymerization from your deck to your hand. And finally, we have Eternal Favorite. It has two effects and you can only activate one per turn. Either you special summon one Yubel monster that is banished or in your graveyard, and neither player can activate cards or effects when that monster is special summoned. Or, if you control Yubel, you can discard one card and send this card from field to the graveyard as cost, and fusion summon one monster using monsters on either field as material, including a Yubel monster. So basically, it's just super polymerization. So how does the deck actually work? Well, the main goal of the deck is going to be to build a really scary board utilizing the Yubel monsters, and you would do that by constantly destroying them to get additional copies out of the deck or from the graveyard. A traditional Yubel end board could have easily 4 or 5 points of interaction just with the monsters alone, and that can be very scary for a lot of decks to deal with. But Yubel does have a hard time doing that on its own. Some of the issues the archetype has are going to be obviously consistency. The deck itself naturally has to play like 6 level 10 or higher monsters, which means it's very hard to summon them out to the field because none of them do really anything on their own. So you want to have good starters for the strategy that can really get the ball rolling or else the deck will just lose before it even gets started. And without those other cards, it becomes really tough for Yubel to just create a proactive end board. Most of the time it's going to be just summon out a Yubel and crash into opposing monsters if you didn't have access to these other powerful fiend cards. One of the minor issues the deck has is actually the battle phase in my opinion, and the reason why is because outside of like Tenpai Dragon exactly, no deck has really been able to use the battle phase with so much success. Yubel tries to do that by forcing your opponent to attack into the Yubel monsters, but it's not always going to be the case if Nightmare Pain isn't on the field. But to get around these issues, Yubella started to incorporate more Fiend-based extenders and starters to create really what is like a fiend link strategy. It still allows Yubella to do all the fun Yubella stuff that can redirect battle damage, but it also allows them to create really powerful end boards that have a lot of interruption that your opponents have a hard time dealing with. And because these Fiend extenders and combo pieces are so good, if the main Yubel lines get interrupted, they can just transition to more Fiend good stuff combos too. Now there are a lot of cards to be worried about when it comes to this deck, so bear with me. The first one I want to talk about is Varudris, the final bringer of the end times. It's a generic rank 10 Xyz monster that's an Omni Negate, and it's easily made in this deck, and it's also one of the more common end pieces the strategy uses. The Unchained package is also extremely popular, consisting of Sharvara, Soul of Rage, Yama, Anguish, and Abomination, and sometimes Escape or Chamber. This package gives the deck a way to dodge interruption thanks to Sharvara, which is also easily searchable, and the interruption it gives on the opponent's turn without having to use a negate is also really nice. The Sacred Beast package is also incredibly common. And no, you aren't actually incorporating any of the Sacred Beast monsters, but you are using Dark Beckoning Beast and Opening of the Spirit Gates, which are awesome starters and extenders. They really are perfect for Yubel stats. Yubel is one of the best decks to ever be able to use Super Polymerization, because you can deal with pretty much everything your opponent could possibly have thanks to Loving Defender Forever. So obviously because of that, Garura and Mud Dragon see play as well. Skill Drain is arguably the best side deck card for this deck. All the Yubel cards don't really care about Skill Drain, and Samsara D Lotus tributes for cost, so it's no longer being negated when it activates the effects. Yubel monsters can now be destroyed by battle, but they trigger on destruction by battle as well. And Pot of Prosperity is another interesting option for this deck. It really comes down to consistency versus non-engine though, and the choice between prosperity and more hand traps belongs to an individual player. Let's talk about some of the ratios you can expect to see in Yubel decks. Now listen, Yubel decks haven't really been solidified just yet, but if you're looking to play Yubel, this is a really good starting point. What you're seeing now is a list of engine cards that I believe are optimal to play Yubel the best way possible. For your big monsters, you definitely want 3 Spirit of Yubel, 2 Original Yubel, and 1 Terror Incarnate. You do not have to play the level 12. 3 each of Dark Beckoning Beast, Samsara D Lotus, and then 2 or 3 of Gruesome Grave Squirmer. I personally think 3 is the way to go because I'd rather have 3 of this card and go to 41 cards in the main deck than just keep it at 2 copies and make the main deck 40, and of course 1 for 1 to help us get Lotus or Grave Squirmer out of the deck. 2 copies of Opening of the Spirit Gates for Dark Beckoning Beast, as well as 3 copies of Nightmare Throne. It's the best card in the deck and you definitely want to see it, so we also play a copy of Terraforming. 
And to wrap up the mandatory cards in the deck, I like to have two copies of Nightmare Pain and one Eternal Favorite, as well as three copies of Super Polymerization. That's 27 or 28 cards that I believe are must plays in Ubel, so we don't have a ton of room for non-engine cards. But I also think that the Unchained package is a must play. I personally want both Sharvara and Escape in the main deck, but you can get away with just Sharvara. And the final cards in the deck are going to be for non-engine and the extra deck, so feel free to put whatever you'd like in these spots, but these are the ones I've chosen for now. But what are some cards that we can use to help beat you, Bell? Starting off with cards that are going to be good on your turn 0. Ghost Ogre isn't a bad option at all, specifically on Nightmare Pain. When they try to destroy a dark monster, you can use Ghost Ogre to destroy the Nightmare Pain to stop it from resolving. Droll is also quite strong against the deck. It's not always going to be amazing, but it is possible to just end their turn with one singular card. And Nibiru is also a great option. If they go through a full Ubel combo, they're going to play into Nibiru, and because Nib tributes and doesn't destroy, it doesn't trigger the Ubel cards. As for cards that are good when you're going first, I really like quick play spell and trap removal like Cosmic Cyclone. At times, Ubel can rely a lot on their field spell and the continuous spells, so stopping them from resolving can be really good. I also want to shout out Samurai Destroyer and Time Lord Progenitor Warpgate. These two synchro monsters are able to deal with the Ubel cards in the battle phase, so they can't just crash into them and win. As for cards that are good on turn 2, I highly recommend Super Polymerization. If your deck already plays Super Poly for cards like Garura or Mud Dragon, then you can incorporate a Starving Venom Fusion Dragon or even your own copy of Loving Defender Forever to really beat down their board. And interestingly enough, I really like Lava Golem and possibly even Sphere Mode against this deck. If Ubel is left unchecked on their first turn, they can end on multiple monsters including Ubel's, Samsara D Lotus, Unchained Soul of Rage, and Verudris, so tributing over them could be really powerful. But a card that I wouldn't use is actually going to be Dimension Shifter. Not because it's a terrible card against them, if you're playing a deck like Blue Wanderees or Kashtira where Dimension Shifter doesn't hurt your strategy at all, then you should keep it in, but if you're playing a deck like Tenpai or Vanquish Soul, I'd recommend finding another option since they can combo through Shifter. So to recap, Ubel is a very strong deck in this format. It's not going to be a top tier threat by any means, but it definitely has the ability to top a regional event with this strategy. It's also not a pure Ubel deck. It's either a Ubel deck with a small Unchained package, or vice versa, where it's an Unchained deck with a small Ubel package. It has a great matchup against Tenpai Dragon, which is going to be very popular in this upcoming format, even though it won't be the best deck in the room. And even without Phantom of Ubel, it's going to be a solid tier 2-ish option. But I do believe that when we get Phantom of Ubel, it'll definitely become a tier 1 threat. And there you have it, you now have an introduction on how to use or beat Ubel. Now let me know down in the comments below, what are your thoughts on the archetype itself and are you planning on playing it? Personally, I will not be playing Ubel at least until we get Phantom of Ubel, but we'll see what happens when that card finally gets released. If you made it this far in the video, you must have enjoyed it, so make sure to smash the like button and of course subscribe to the channel as well for more amazing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh videos. Check out my sponsor Imperium Duelist and use code OSHEA10 O -S -H -E -A -10, for 10% off your purchase, and of course follow me on Twitter and join the Discord server. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next time.